my 16-year-old stepdaughter was manipulated into hiding infidelity from me. My, 47 meters, stepdaughter, who we'll call Phoebe, lost her dad when she was 7. She remembers him as her hero, and I try to keep his memory alive for her as much as I can. My wife, 45F, and Phoebe's father were divorced when he passed away. I had met him a few times and always admired how much he loved his daughter. We had about two years of co-parenting before his passing, so I was there to support both Phoebe and my wife. It was a tough time for all of us. Phoebe was feeling isolated and confused, my wife was distressed, and I was devastated to see them both hurting. I did my best to provide support, even though we weren't wealthy. My main goal was never to replace her dad, so Elle was surprised when Phoebe started calling me dad when she was 13. It still warms my heart every time she says it. As the years went by, Phoebe and I grew closer and learned to navigate our unique family situation. About six months ago, my wife started pulling away. I thought it was just a midlife crisis, but looking back, it was clear signs of infidelity. She had late work projects, business trips, and seemed distant. She didn't even want intimacy. At the same time, I noticed Phoebe more anxious around her mother. She would avoid me and spend less time with me, which hurt, but I chalked it up to teenage angst. I tried talking to Phoebe, but she would avoid me and stay in her room or out late. She wouldn't even share about her day with me. That's when I realized something was really wrong. I snooped on our shared iPad and found messages from someone named Fiona. Turns out, Fiona is a 40-year-old man. I was feeling a mix of emotions, disgust, anger, and hurt. But one question kept nagging at me, why was Phoebe acting so strangely? The following evening, I was driving Phoebe to therapy when I decided to ask her about her feelings towards her mom working so much. This seemed to make her defensive. She raised her voice and insisted that she didn't care, that it was just work and everything was fine. We went back and forth for a couple of minutes until she finally asked me, do you know? That's when she dropped the bombshell, not only had my wife been cheating on me for 8 months, but Phoebe had caught her in the act. I felt betrayed, but that feeling quickly turned to rage when Phoebe explained why she hadn't told me. My wife had threatened her, saying it would be her fault if I left and never came back. As heartbreaking as that was, nothing could have prepared me for what Phoebe said next. I'm sorry, really. I just didn't want to lose two dads, I don't think I could handle that again. Please don't leave, daddy. I tried to hide my emotions, to reassure her that I wasn't going anywhere, but deep down, I was seething. Hurting me was one thing, but bringing my daughter into it was unforgivable. I wanted to scream, to cry, to see that woman suffer for what she had done to my daughter. But I knew that wasn't an option. All I could do in the moment was reassure my girl, that's what I had to do. I haven't told my wife that I know. I don't know what to do next. I'm pissed. Sorry for being vague. I can't get my mind right. Update, one day later. Update, my 16-year-old stepdaughter was manipulated into hiding infidelity from me. I wanted to give a quick update on the situation with Phoebe. I had to cut it short because I promised a very hangry teenager some McDonald's. The initial six hours proved to be quite tumultuous. Phoebe appeared noticeably tense and apprehensive, probably tearing her mother tinding out. She clung to me, even going so far as to endure watching baseball, a sport she typically despises. Her conversations with her mother were marked by a hint of irritability, a behavior I chose not to address as I normally would. It seemed as though the dynamics of our relationship had shifted, with Phoebe now exhibiting the same volatile behavior that I had previously experienced. Gradually, she came to realize that she was in a safe environment, and began to relax her grip on me. However, her demeanor towards her mother remained curt. Phoebe and I had a chat about what she wants, and she expressed a desire for me to have full custody of her. She also opened up about some other emotional abuse she has endured from her mother. I assured her that I would do my best to gain full custody but explained that since Elle never officially adopted her, I may only be able to get visitation rights. She also asked about emancipation, which I admitted I know very little about, so we decided to look into it together. I'm really hoping Phoebe can keep up her grades next year, as she's on track for a music scholarship to a good university. She's been spending a lot of time playing her violin since our chat, and I'm happy to see her using music as a way to cope. I'm not pushing her on school stuff right now since it's the end of the year and won't affect her GPA. I'm just hoping she can get back to her usual driven self by September. Phoebe is definitely not acting like your average teenager, but she's starting to show some of her old self again, which I'm grateful for. It made me so happy when she started teasing me again. However, I can't help but wonder if she's hiding her true feelings behind her jokes. She has a tendency to keep her emotions bottled up until she can't take it anymore. She hasn't said much besides feeling relieved about not hiding things from me anymore, 
so LM not sure if I should be more concerned. As for my wife, I wish I could say I've stopped caring about her, but a part of me still loves her. I try not to dwell on those thoughts for too long because I believe the best thing for Phoebe is to get both of us away from her mother. I've been reflecting on my own childhood and how my feelings were often overlooked when my parents made decisions. I never want Phoebe to experience that same feeling, especially since she will be the one most affected by all of this. Phoebe is currently seeing two therapists, one specializing in CPTSD for events I haven't discussed here, and another specializing in OCD. I have faith that they will be able to support her through this challenging time. I'm in the process of looking for a lawyer, and I've been a bit distant with my wife lately. It feels strange to ask Phoebe to keep quiet about what I know, so I've decided not to bring it up. If she does end up talking about it, I won't hold it against her. I've been gathering evidence from texts and bank statements, and it turns out my wife spent around $8,500 on the other guy. I can't believe how clueless I was. This'll probably be the last update for a while I'll update again when I speak with a lawyer and decide exactly what I'm going to do. Thank you all so much for your support. Hope this was a sufficient enough update on Phoebe's mental state. Phoebe took her life on June 17th. It feels like it's my fault. I can't believe her bright light is just gone. The day before was Father's Day, and Phoebe approached the topic of a possible adoption, or maybe emancipation with my wife. It soon turned into a fight, as her mother thought it would be a waste of time since Phoebe would have been 18 and a little over a year and a half. Phoebe kept arguing that it was for sentimental reasons and that she's wanted to be adopted by me for so long. I don't know if my wife was just paranoid, or if she already suspected that I knew about her cheating, but she began to get more hostile. My wife ended up saying something along the lines of, you'd still have your real dad if you hadn't stressed him into doing drugs. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. Phoebe had a meltdown like I'd never seen before. She was cursing her mother out, crying, throwing things, and it was all just so out of character neither my wife or I knew what to do. The rest of the night was eerily quiet. Neither my wife or Phoebe pushed the matter any further. Phoebe cleaned up her mess, apologized to me for ruining my special day, and went upstairs. There was no warmth that night, no sit-down dinner, just silence. I guess we were all in shock. I'd love to say my last conversation with Phoebe was something positive but it wasn't. I'd like to say I told her how much I love her but I didn't. All I cared about was being reimbursed for the damages she'd caused during her meltdown. Maybe if I hadn't been so selfish I would have noticed how dejected she looked. Maybe if I'd handled the situation for what it was, a mental breakdown, instead of an act of defiance, she would still be here. But she isn't and there's nothing I can do. I should have seen it coming. There were plenty of signs, I was just too stupid to see them for what they were until she didn't wake up. I could have gotten her more help but I didn't. There were little things like, hey dad, if I die make sure to play dreaming of you at my funeral, and if I die before you, make sure I'm wearing a suit instead of a dress in my coffin and the one that seems to be the most obvious, play at your best, you are love, at my funeral for my girlfriend please. I thought those were just distasteful jokes most teens make. I've never been so stupid in my life. The days leading up to her funeral are a blur, I barely managed to pull myself together the day of. I was so angry at my wife, and also at Phoebe. I was angry because I wish I would have listened to her obvious pleas. I was angry at myself for not being approachable enough. I made sure all of her requests were fulfilled. She was lowered into the ground with dreaming of you playing on a speaker. I hadn't cried the entire day until then. Perhaps I should have chosen one of the other songs she requested, because that one broke the stoic demeanor I was trying to convey. I guess it was both the tragedy behind the artist that my daughter held so near to her heart, and the realization that Phoebe's really gone. As she was being lowered, it was just my wife, myself, Phoebe's girlfriend, and a few other very close people. The music was a respectable volume though somehow deafening. That's it she was just gone. Her girlfriend was not handling it well, and she disappeared shortly after the reception following the burial. I felt terribly for her though I couldn't bring myself to say anything, which is another thing I regret. I'm starting the process to divorce my wife. I can't look at her without having flashbacks to the look on Phoebe's face when my wife said those horrible things. There is no recovering from this. That girl meant the world to me and now it seems like Therese no point to doing anything. My wife can take all our assets for all I care. 